And now turning to this Earth Day report, for more than two decades, researchers have been attempting to increase the population of the endangered Mexican gray wolf. CBS 8's Evan Ronnie joining us now to tell us how this is finally happening here, Evan. Made a trip out to the California Wolf Center nice. in Julian. Nice. They've got acres and acres for wolves to uh, run around and they're doing important mm -hmm. stuff out there. So that's thanks to the help from the California Wolf Center that this goal has become a reality with the population of the Mexican gray wolf soaring more than 23% since the species survival plan began back in 97. Take a look at my visit. It's being applauded as a recovery success story. The nearly extinct Mexican gray wolf population rebounding after a 25 year effort to save them. Across the world, species are dying every day. But for us in the United States who work in species recovery and in Mexico to come together and save a species, the Mexican gray wolf, has been amazing. The dramatic shift is thanks in part to the California Wolf Center in Julian, acres of land where two dozen Mexican gray wolves roam, and even a few northwestern gray wolves enjoy the open space and sometimes even the wild weather. I will say, the wolves had an awesome time. They loved the snow. They are designed for snow. They have a double coat. They loved it. It was the humans that had more issues. The humans, however, still play a vital role in growing the population. In facilities like this, adult Mexican gray wolves can be brought together to mate, with their pups being reintroduced into the wild. Researchers will lure a mother wolf away from her den and integrate the pups bred in captivity with those born in the wild. When mom comes back, she accepts the new wolves in the pack in a process they call cross-fostering. Red Riding Hood story of the big bad wolf doesn't, isn't really true. They're very family focused. And so when that mother comes back to her den, it's just a couple more puppies. So she doesn't count them and they're just all welcome. Welcome by the whole pack. The California Wolf Center has been a part of the Mexican gray wolf species survival plan since 1997. The goal there is to be able to increase genetic diversity in these wolves and ideally to be able to reintroduce them into the wild. Seeing uh, the number passing not just 200, but also seeing that compared to the 2021 numbers, that was a 23% increase and seeing such a significant recovery for them, especially starting from just 13 individuals is so, so exciting and so impressive that our efforts have made a difference. It also marks the seventh consecutive year of population growth, more than doubling their total numbers across Arizona and New Mexico since 2017. So for their enrichment, they're receiving peanut butter and honey dog treats. You can go ahead and just do one, two, three. Okay. See, they'll come and investigate. <laughs> Oh, they saw that coming. Yes. They also have incredible hearing, and so they can really hear when we start moving around. In the wild, wolves act as an apex predator, helping with population control of elk, deer, and bison, though many ranchers across the Southwest view them as a threat to their livestock. It's a fine dance, but it's a collaboration, and it really is important for everybody involved that we want the wolves to feel successful that we can reintroduce and we want the rancher to be successful it's their livelihood the california wolf center provides resources to those ranchers and while this endangered species is now looking toward a sustainable future their work isn't over your mission is not done just because those animals are at a sustainable population we need to continue to make sure that future generations understand that this animal is so important And one thing to keep in mind is that despite those wolves being owned by the federal government, the California Wolf Center in Julian provides all of the care for those wolves that they have on site from food to vet care. They rely on donations from the public and they're open to tours by reservation. That's an additional way that they help to supplement those donations. They also have an Amazon wish list for items that can help their efforts in protecting these animals. You can find that wish list and more on this story on our website, CBS 8. They need more of those uh, mm. peanut butter treats for those wolves. I was going to say oh, peanut butter and honey. Boy, Sounds good. <laughs> Evan, when you threw that over, they came over and sniffed they that out real and quick. And it's interesting good because smellers. even in their uh, wild habitat mm -hmm. there, uh, you could see the dynamics of, you know, yeah. the bigger one might come yeah. over a little bit faster. There's another one that might kind of wait on the sidelines for the first one to run <laughs> over and then scurry <laughs> away. It so it's try. really fascinating. They talk about yeah. how at zoos, you know, they'll uh, separate them from their habitat to uh, clean up and to give yeah. them food. Here, they don't do that. They walk okay 
into the enclosure wow. with the wolves, but the wolves are so scared of humans that they keep oh. their distance. So they said they can come in with fresh fish, anything yeah. that they want, any any of their mm -hmm. favorite foods, and they won't come close They'll until like they've left that enclosure. They'll stand back and watch. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was fascinating too to see how different they all look. The gray ones, right. the white ones, yeah. the yeah. brown ones, sizes, I mean, all different kinds. And how they do the fostering We don't get to too. see them often, nope. right? Yeah, that's super neat. <laughs> yeah, that cross fostering is, yeah. is just so fascinating to see that you can breed them in captivity and then reintroduce those puppies mm. into the wild like Such that. Such cute yeah. puppies too. Mm -hmm. oh.